Have you ever found yourself arguing with your mom over curfews and chores? It's common, right? But what if those disagreements took a dark turn? Well, that's exactly what happened in the lives of Anne Margaret Carubin and her daughters, Caroline and Catherine. Teenagers usually rebel a bit against parental rules, but planning to harm your mother? That's on a whole other level. These girls went from everyday disagreements to something straight out of a crime thriller. They didn't just dislike their mom's rules, they plotted her downfall with chilling precision that shook the entire nation of Canada. Do you feel regret? Of course I do, with every, every shred of my being, my soul, my- But why? What drove Caroline and Catherine to take such drastic measures? And did they face the consequences for their unimaginable actions? Welcome back to True Crime Tangles. Join us as we explore the heartbreaking story of Anne Margaret Karubin. Anne Margaret Lebenstein was born in Poland on April 5, 1959. She then moved to Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, where she met and married a man known as Mr. Karubin. They welcomed their daughters, Caroline and Catherine, in 1987 and 1988, respectively. Initially, they seemed like a happy family, but that didn't last long. As time passed, Mr. Karubin grew distant from his daughters and Anne, eventually divorcing her and neglecting to provide child support. Anne found herself as a single mother, working tirelessly to support her daughters. As Anne worked hard at two jobs to support her daughters, it meant that she wasn't around much. The girls missed her a lot. Anne got sad and started drinking to cope with her loneliness. She also started dating a co-worker named Doug, who moved in with them. At first, Doug seemed like the perfect partner for Anne. They even had a son named Robert. But later, Doug's true nature emerged. He became physically abusive towards Anne during arguments. And Caroline and Catherine also suffered his violence when they tried to interfere. But little did Anne know, the abuse towards her daughters was just the beginning of Doug's sinister actions. Whenever Anne got drunk or was away, Doug would sexually abuse the girls. This went on for years until Caroline and Catherine told Anne, and she ended things with Doug. But things got even worse after that. Anne turned to drinking all the time, becoming an alcoholic. She spent most of her money on booze, leaving Caroline and Catherine alone in a home where food was scarce. They felt abandoned and helpless. Caroline and Catherine asked their dad, grandparents, and Anne's friends for help, but no one stepped up. Despite their pleas, Anne seemed unconcerned about their struggles, causing constant arguments between them. They even dropped out of school and started smoking at such a young age. Can you imagine what they must be going through? Over time, Caroline and Catherine got tired of Anne and envied their friends who seemed to have everything. Caroline, now 16, and Catherine, 15, wanted things like a swimming pool and stylish clothes, just like their friends. They didn't like Anne and saw her as someone who drank too much, not as a mom who was tired and struggled with alcohol. Catherine couldn't shake the idea that Anne would never stop drinking and might eventually die from it. She felt trapped and thought she should just end it for her mother as she felt trapped in her presence. Reluctantly, Catherine shared her scary thoughts with Caroline who quickly agreed to the idea of killing their mother. Besides getting away from Anne, they planned to use her life insurance money to travel to Europe with friends once they turned 18. After looking online, Caroline and Catherine decided drowning was the best way to kill someone. It was fast and not dramatic. They carefully planned the murder and even talked to a few close friends about it. Their friends encouraged them and joked about Anne's death. How shocking is that? Moving on to January 18th, 2003, Caroline and Catherine hatched a plan to make their mum, Anne, drink without her knowing. They added crushed codeine and Tylenol, three tablets to her drink, to make her heart beat slower. While they waited, the girls texted their friends for tips, who suggested wearing gloves. Then, they guided Anne, who was drunk, to the bathtub under the guise of giving her a massage to relax. Once in the tub, Caroline dunked Anne's head underwater while Catherine timed it with a stopwatch. After four minutes, they let her go and Anne's body went limp. They exchanged a high five before leaving her lifeless in the bathroom. To make it seem like they weren't involved, the sisters went out to eat at Jack Astor's nearby, celebrating their deed. When they got back, they called 911 at 10.35 p.m., faking distress, saying they'd just found their mom drowned in the tub. 
When the cops showed up at their house, Margaret Caravan was already gone. Drowning deaths were rare, so they were immediately suspicious. Forensic teams started investigating, but were puzzled. Investigators noticed the living room was tidy, showing no signs of a struggle. The bathroom, where the incident happened, was fairly neat, except for a vodka bottle. Margaret's daughters, Catherine and Caroline, who called 911, were questioned but seemed too upset to say much. During questioning, the girls asked to stay with their aunt nearby. With them gone, the coroner examined the body. Some things seemed odd, like multiple glasses of alcohol and the water temperature in the bathroom. The autopsy revealed Margaret had a high alcohol level, which could explain the drowning, but the absence of bruises puzzled the coroner. Despite this, the death was ruled an accidental drowning, and the case was closed. The girls went to live with their aunt, their late mother's sister, who became their legal guardian. Plus, they inherited nearly $200,000 in life insurance, making it seem like they got away with murder. What a cunning plan. But here's where it gets interesting. A year later, in January 2004, detectives reopened the case due to a surprising twist. An investigator revealed that someone had received information from the older sister, suggesting their mother had been murdered or drowned forcefully in the bathtub. Despite their efforts to cover their tracks, the sisters couldn't keep quiet. They partied, drank, and used drugs. They even bragged to several people about what they'd done, thinking they had gotten away with it. However, a close family friend who knew their mother heard of it and went to the authorities. Talk about karma. The police didn't have proof of murder, but they didn't ignore the report and decided to use him to get the sisters to confess. They wired the guy and his car, telling him to get the girls to admit what they'd done. Caroline and Catherine fell into the trap, telling him in detail how they had killed Anne, unaware that they were being recorded. What came next was unsettling and chilling. Listening to the recorded conversation made it clear that the older sister, and perhaps the younger one too, were involved in their mother's murder. Hearing the girl's version of events that night sent shivers down the officers' spines. The sisters described their entire murder act to the officers. They even told them that they texted friends, then rushed to a nearby bar to meet someone and make an excuse. Later, they came back home and called the cops, acting like they had just gotten there and found their mom in the tub. What's most disturbing is that three people knew what the sisters planned to do beforehand, yet none reported it. Even after the crime, they boasted about it to many friends their age. However, none thought to inform their parents or authorities, allowing the sisters to escape capture for nearly a year. The authorities arrested the sisters on January 21st, 2004. Following weeks of trial, both sisters were convicted of first-degree murder. Because they were under 18 when the crime occurred, Canadian law limited their sentence to a maximum of 10 years. Moreover, as they were treated as youths under the law, their identities, along with their mothers, remained undisclosed. This legal protection allowed them to relocate anonymously once they finished serving their mandatory six years. At the sentencing, Justice Bruce Duncan noted that the defendants had thought they were successfully committing the perfect crime. However, in truth, they had unknowingly paved the way for their prosecution. He also ordered them to be kept apart and not allowed to communicate. However, they were released on parole after serving just under four years in prison. After completing their probation in 2016, the sisters chose to keep a low profile, trying to live quietly after their terrible crime. Caroline pursued engineering, while Catherine studied law. The story of the sisters who planned this, well, not so perfect murder, is a scary reminder of how even ordinary people can do terrible things. Now tell us, do you believe justice was truly served in this case? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe for more interesting content. Thank you for watching.